It's this port. In fact, this is not your regular LAN port. It's called an IPMI port. Let's talk about it. This is Supermicro X11SCL-IF and it's one of their entry-level mini, mini, <laughs> mini ITX motherboards and I absolutely love Supermicro's motherboards. In fact, I have several of them in my home lab. This is not a sponsored video. I bought all of the Supermicro motherboards myself, but I super like them because they're super reliable. So the first thing I should talk about when it comes to differences between a server motherboard and a PC motherboard is the overall look. Uh, server motherboards, because they are intended to go into a server rack, don't get looked at very often. In fact, they're meant to spend years in a server rack and that's why they're missing all the nice design features that your typical PC motherboard will come with. There's none of that here. It's just, you know, the socket, the RAM ports, the power supply port or the ATX port and maybe a PCIe expansion port which this particular motherboard has. Now you may also notice there's a lack of sound card again because it's meant to fit into a rack or to be mounted into one. There is no need for a sound device on it which is why this one lacks it or they all do lack it as well because nobody's gonna plug in headphones and listen to some music on a server motherboard. When I asked my friends on Twitter what points about server motherboards I should talk about, one of them asked in a very interesting question. Is there any difference when it comes to cooling? And in fact, yes, there is. Fan headers on this particular motherboard can deliver up to three amps of current, whereas a normal PC motherboard can go max one amp. And in fact, the fans themselves are different and much louder for the servers as well, because in a data center, nobody really cares about the noise. For example, with a 12 volt fan, this can actually have it work at 36 watts. So three amps times 12 volts is 36 watts. Uh, so they can, you know what? Let me actually show you. Okay, so this is your regular Corsair PC fan and I'll plug it directly into a <laughs> Jerry rig power supply, which I made just for testing the fans. And here we go. So this is your regular fan at full speed. I think this one is around 1500, maybe 2000 RPM. And this is a server grade, one new compatible 40 millimeter fan, which is rated at 0.6 amps of power or current. Let's plug it in. Now imagine having a server farm of these. It can get very loud. And the second most asked question was the price. Yes, server motherboards are usually more expensive, but there is a little secret that most of us home labbers and network enthusiasts know that I shall share with you. So yes, server motherboards are more expensive, but because data centers constantly need to evolve and invest in new gear, they sell out a lot of old gear on a second-hand market. And by the air quotes, I meant that that gear, while being maybe four, five, six years old, is still orders of magnitude faster and more durable than your typical off-the-shell router or gear that you can buy in your nearby electronics store. So we all tend to buy, and by we, I mean network enthusiasts and home labbers, we buy it secondhand from eBay for relatively cheap. Uh, this one, for example, is not used. In fact, it's brand new, but it had the status of open box, which is why I was able to get it for 200 euros, which is, I don't know, $230, I think. So it's not that expensive compared to a PC motherboard. Why are new more expensive? Well, it comes down to the components. Because these motherboards are expected to run five, six, seven years on full load 
24-7. Obviously, the components that are on the board need to be of a higher durability ratings, so they're more expensive because of that, and in turn, the whole board is more expensive. Now to the star of the show, the port I was talking about earlier, and there's another port, and that's this port. And there's a chip. So, what are these three components? Uh, these three components are part of a system that is called Board Management System, or an IPMI, which stands for IP Management Interface. It allows you to control the whole server through this Ethernet port. So, what the board itself needs in able to be controlled is just have power supplied to it. It doesn't need to be turned on at all. In fact, this VGA port, which is just for some basic maintenance reasons, so you can plug a monitor in, doesn't need to be used at all. You can completely manage the whole system just through your web browser and the IP of this interface, which can be configured either statically or through DHCP. You access it and you can even get a virtual screen running on your computer through the browser. So you don't even need a monitor. And if you'd like to see me set this board up completely through the web browser, let me know and I'll prepare a tutorial about how to do it. This chip that is on it, it's called A-Speed AST2500 and it's quite common on the motherboards. In fact, all my motherboards have this exact same chip, which makes it quite convenient uh, because all the interfaces look exactly the same. So you can actually see all the statuses, so from the CPU status, memory status, cooling status, power, everything can be visited and visible in your browser. You can also reset the server, you can enter the BIOS, you can do pretty much everything just by using this port. And it's super convenient because most of us, and especially then in the data centers, you don't want technicians to run to each server whenever there's a problem. You just need this port, usually it's connected to a management switch that other like uh, consumer facing ports don't have access to so that the management or the sysadmins in a data center can configure each server independently from one control room. And yes, I like this feature as well, though I don't have a data center, I just have a basement with a rack, it is very useful that in case something goes wrong, I can just open my browser, visit the IP of this system and just remotely manage it, reset it, shut it down, do whatever I want. So this is one of the best features or more unique features that these motherboards have. Now before we wrap this video up, let me show you uh, an, an image of a 3D model of a case that this board will go into. It's not manufactured yet, in fact I'm waiting my turn with the CNC milling machine, which will take a complete block of aluminum or aluminium and will turn it into a beautiful enclosure for this particular board and will configure OpenSense on it and make it a complete router, which then, as I said, will I will ship to one of the subscribers of the channel. So again, make sure you're subscribed. Please like this video. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next one.